Hey, this is OXTF, and I'm doing another uh, challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF recently on Hack the Box. Um, this is another forensics challenge called Trick or Breach. Uh, let's take a look. We've got a single PCAP again here, so we'll go ahead and open that in Wireshark. And let's see, we'll do a capture and put that in the background. Okay, um, so this time, um, we'll start with our statistics again, just like we did in the previous challenge in Wireshark. Um, so we'll come down here and take a look at conversations. Um, and this time we'll see, so still, just like last one, we've only got two endpoints talking to each other. Um, this 147 IP address, and then a 192.168.1.10, uh, 916 packets. Um, no TCP conversations, all UDP. So that's interesting. And um, it looks like every single one is from this private IP to this uh, public IP on 53. So every single one of them is a, a, a UDP the DNS request really going out and going out to the DNS server and a response coming back. Uh, every single one of these is uh, two packets, one each way. So that's useful. Um, we can come down to do the um, protocol hierarchy and we'll see just what we just what we saw there. Um, everything is DNS 100%. So with that, um, clearly we think something is some sort of information is being exfilled over DNS. Um, and if we start to look at these query names, um, it's these long strings dot pumpkin corp dot com. And we have all these strings.pumpkincore.com, uh, and then we have the responses following them. Um, there's there's two approaches to pulling out this kind of DNS information. I've shown um, in past videos, um, I did a walk some walkthroughs on the Hack the Box channel um, using Python and Scapey to actually pull those out. I'm going to show something slightly different here today, um, and that's going to be T Shark. Um, so if we do T Shark on the uh, on this file. We can do T shark and we'll give it um, dash T fields and we want to get the DNS.qry.name. And so what this is going to do is going to say, you know, I want to pull out the field, the DNS query name, and I need to give it dash R. To, if I just run it like this, it's going to be reading, doing actually a live capture or actually like not succeed because I don't have privileges to do that. But if I give it dash R and say, instead of doing a real capture, you know, read it from this file and we run this and we're going to get a list of all these fields. And so we can, See, pipe this into less and take a look at it from the top. Um, now you'll see every line is repeated twice, and that's because the query is getting in, in both packets, both the uh, request and the response. We really only want to get it once. We don't want to see it twice. So um, there's a way that you surely could do this in T Shark. Um, for me, I'm just going to use the UNI, the unique you 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 in you in. I don't know exactly how you say it in Bash um, thing. And what that does is basically it takes every line that it, it, anytime two lines in a row show up, it just collapses that into one. Um, so it's going to be really handy for exactly what I want here. So if I run this, now I get this result here. Um, I don't, just looking at what I've got here, as far as data, um, it definitely all looks like hex. You know, everything is um, numbers and A through F. Um, so it's definitely hex data. So I'm going to want to convert that back to binary, but it's not ASCII hex data. It looks like one long stream of, you know, binary data. Um, it may jump out at you right away, um, 54B, if we look at what that is, um, if we go into, we can drop into a Python shell here. If we do char on OX50, um, that is a P character, and 4B is a K. Um, this is just kind of one of those things that you kind of learn over time. But um, even if you didn't, we, we wouldn't have to know this to make this file. But let's, let's see. Um, if we come in here and we do, um, let's see, Wikipedia uh, file signatures right there. That's what we want. A list of file signatures. I love this page. Um, if we come here, not sure why it's lagging for me right now. Oh, my mouse is caught up somewhere. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so if we come here and we do a cert control F for PK. We'll see right here that PK is the magic bytes, the starting bytes for the zip file format. In fact, PK 03, 05, and 07. Let's see what we got over here. Um, we will drop out of this and run this again. PK0304 uh, happens to match up right there with this nice file signature. So it looks like we have a zip file. So let's go ahead and work on trying to get that back to what we need. We want to remove the domain here. So we can do a cut. Um, cut in bash is going to take each line. It's going to apply line by line. And we can say the delimiter dash D of a period. And we want to then get the first field only. So in that case, we'll get you know just this. Um, if we wanted to, we could do like uh, F uh, one through two, and I'll show you what that looks like. And that'll say, you know, it gets me the first two, but I don't want the first two. I really only want the first one. So we'll just do F one 
and now we've got that. Um, and now what I'm going to do actually is it, that actually looks like I shouldn't have closed this. Um, this looks like it's kind of a hex dump to me, and I wanted to reverse a hex dump. I can use uh, xxd, and so I can say xxd minus r, and I think I need the minus p here. Um, and let's see, let's put, if we put that into less, we're going to see uh, binary junk, but we can see that there is a PK at the beginning. In fact, it's a little unintuitive, but to see what's coming out of my XXD minus reverse, um, I can just put it back into XXD and look at it. And now I get, you know, the binary file coming through here is, you know, here's the PK magic number up here. In fact, we can see these strings going through here, and this is looking pretty good. So um, instead of going to less, and instead of putting that into XXD, we'll just come here and we'll save this as out.zip. If we do a file on out.zip, we can see it is a Microsoft Excel 2007. Um, so that's cool um, that we got an Excel file. Let's see. Um, let's, why don't we, I guess we can, from here, we can open this up and we can come to, where's heck, the boo, there we go. And we got forensics, trick or breach, and we can, out.zip, let's open this up. Um, I guess we'll just unzip it, it seems like the, I guess I don't have LibreOffice on this VM. So we will uh, unzip out.zip. Got files here. We can go into, um, we can just do a recursive grep at this point uh, for hack the box like this. See if we find, there it is, it's right there, our flag. Um, so basically in case, in case, just for people who are new to this, um, a Microsoft Office files, the modern Microsoft Office files, are just zip files with a bunch of stuff in them that then Office knows how to interpret and read out. So um, if I had known that that was what's coming, I could install LibreOffice. In fact, we can do that. Let's um, sudo app install Libre. Is that, oops, no, let's see, LibreOffice, is that right? Uh, my, I may, if this takes a minute, we might skip through it. No, let's, uh, yeah, we'll probably, well, going pretty quickly. So we're going to install LibreOffice here, and then we'll just open up this file here in LibreOffice and uh, see what comes. You know, actually, I wonder if I do have LibreOffice and I just wasn't recognizing it because it was a zip file. Um, let's see, if we want to move, um, let's see, copy out.zip to out.xlsx. And I wonder if we have, let's see, hack the boo, trick or breach, uh, out.xlsx. Here we go. We can open it up in our LibreOffice, and there's the flag right there. Um, so to go back on what we just did, there's two ways to show this. We can open this, this, this zip file is a Office file. So we open it up in, in, that, in this case, the, you know, the free Office competitor, LibreOffice, and we can see the flag right there. Um, we could also just unzip it and look through the files. So we unzipped it and we said, okay, so, you know, where's my grep here? Uh, grep, I know I'm looking for basically something that start that goes, you know, hack the box squiggly bracket. I'll do a grep minus R, which is recursive. On the current directory, you just walk through all these files we unzipped and see which one has it. And this uh, file right here, I guess it shows us, um, we have found this result right here, and there is the flag itself. So um, two different ways to sort of see that result. Um, hopefully that was useful. And uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.